I love you as well, Daruna, taking you through this story for A level applied mathematics. And this video, we are going to go through the marking guide for Senior 5, Math Part 2, Mid, to, mid of Term 2 for the year 2024. So this video is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So this paper, it had six questions and a student was supposed to attempt any five. But since this is revision, we shall attempt all the six questions. So let's begin with question one. Question one came from scatter graphs and correlation. It says, nine voters in Jinja and Kampala were asked to give the government a score of out of a hundred on each of the nine issues. The results were, tab were shown in the table below. So these are the voters, okay, these are the issues for the nine voters, and these are their scores. Then from there they said, one, plot a scatter diagram for the data. Then two, draw a line of base fit on the scatter diagram and use it to estimate Roman one. The voters score in Kampala on an issue which was given a score of 89 in Jinja. And then Roman 2, the voters score in Jinja on an issue which was given a score of 55 in Kampala. Then part C, calculate the rank correlation coefficient between the voters in the two districts. Then comment on the result at 5% level of significance. So questions on correlation, like I told you, the first thing to do is to tabulate before you begin even answering. So we shall come and draw our table. Issues, there is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I, A, G, H, I. Then the values of X, that is now ginger. Let's see here. Yeah, X is ginger, Y is Kampala. Then we shall come and add the total, add the whole of this. We are adding the total because we are told to get the line of best fit. So this total will help us get the main point. And also issues scores on Kampala. So still we have to add all these ones and get the total. The next is to rank. We are shall rank values of X. Remember ranking is in descending order. So begin with the highest. Highest is 95, it takes rank 1. Followed by 80, it takes rank 2. Followed by 77, it takes rank 3. Followed by 70, it takes rank 4. Followed by 65, it takes rank 5. Followed by 45. Now these are two. Remember, identical values take the same rank of their of the average of their would be position. So from 5, we would have gone to 6 and 7. But because they are the same, we shall get their average, which is 6.5. So both of them will take the same rank of 6.5, 6.5. The next is 38, which will take rank 8. Why? Because position 6 and 7 have been occupied. And lastly is 25, which will take rank 9. That was rank for X. Now, now we shall go to ranks for Y. Still do the same. Descending order. So highest is 90. It takes rank 1. Followed by 82. It takes rank 2. Followed by 73. It takes rank 3. Followed by 65. It takes rank 4. Followed by 61. It takes rank 5. Followed by 48. They are also 2. So one would have taken 6. Another one 7. So their average is still 6.5, so she'll give 6.5 for each, here and here. 
So next will be, we'll take position 8, which is this, and lastly 30, which will take position 9. Okay, now next we're going to get the difference in the two ranks. The order doesn't matter, you can choose to say this minus this or this minus this. But for consistency, it is better to use Rx minus Ry. So this minus this, 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 and let's see this minus that. Then you shall need to get the square of those deviations. So this squared, this squared, this squared, this squared, this squared, this squared, square of this, square of this, square of this. Then from there you shall need to add all this and get a total. So there are two marks for this table. Now we can answer the question. The first question was plot a scatter diagram. So shall come with a graph paper. Draw the axis. I think you remember. We leave one centimeter down. Let me first. Leave one centimeter down just to write the axis and labeling. Then also leave one centimeter here. And draw the vertical axis using a long ruler, reasonably new. Then you shall, you shall demarcate two two centimeters intervals of two two centimeters. Then you get a correct scale, which will fit on your graph paper. Do the same for the vertical two two centimeters, and get a, a suitable scale. I want you to note that even though here they are starting with the same value, each axis must have its own starting point. Then labeling, we don't say x, y. We have to put what was given in the question. Okay, now that we've done that, next would be now to plot. 45 with 73, it is there. 38 with 82, it is here. 65 with 61, it is here. 80 with 43, it is here. 70 with 48, it is here. 65 with six, 45 with 65, it is here. 25 with 90, it is here. 95 with 30, it is here, 77 with 48, it's here. Then we also need to, that is called a scatter diagram. But Roman 2, they wanted you to draw O part B. They wanted you to draw the line of base fit. So there, we shall need to also get the mean point, which is this. Okay, let's first see how it comes about. So X bar is summation of X over value of N which is the number of pairs to give you 60. Summation of y is that to give you... Summation of y over n gives you 60. So that means that the mean point will be 60, 60. Therefore, you shall come and also plot it. 60, 60, which is there. To distinguish it from the race, we put capital M to mean mean point. Then the rules for drawing line of base fit your line of base fit must fulfill the three conditions. The first condition is that it must pass through the mean point. Two, it must pass through any other one or more points. Any. Then three, it must leave equal or almost equal points on either side. So let me draw this line and we analyze whether the, all the three conditions have been met. One. This line has gone through the mean point. That's condition one fulfilled. It has gone through any other one or more. Actually, they are one, two, three, four. It has gone through four points. So that is condition two fulfilled. Then three, it must leave equal or almost equal points on either side. Let's look at this side. This side, there is one, two. Two points on that side. This side, there is one, 
two, three. So that's what they mean by almost equal. So almost equal means a difference of one. Three minus two is one. So all the three conditions have been met, meaning that your line of best fit is now correct. Then you can go to the next part. Next what they said, estimate the voters score in Kampala on an issue which scored, which was given a score of 89 in Jinja. So we'll come here. On the part of ginger, look for 89 and take a horizontal line up to meet the line of best fit. Then take a horizontal line to meet the vertical axis and then read off that value, which is 35. So shall come here and say, That the voter score in Kampala on an issue which was given a score of 89 in Ginger will be 35. That was Roman 1. Now we shall go to Roman 2. Roman 2, they want the voter score in Ginger on an issue which was given a score of 55 in Kampala. So just still go back to our graph and look for 55 on the part of Kampala. Take a horizontal line to meet the line of best fit. Drop to meet the horizontal axis. Then read off that value to 66. So I'll come here and say, The voter score in Ginger on an issue which was given a score of 55 in Kampala is 66. That was part A. What about part B? Part B, we have the, it's, okay, part C. Calculate the rank correlation coefficient between the voters in the two districts and comment on your result at 5% level of significance. So rank correlation, we need the summation of d squared, which is 237. So then with this graph work, we can give, allocate its max. So those were the graphs, max for this slide. Then for this one, we shall now calculate the rank correlation coefficient. So substitute for summation of d squared and the number of pairs. You will come up with this. Then they said comment on your result. You are going to compare the magnitude of this value with the table value. So the magnitude is 0 0.975. Let's come here. 10 pairs, no, we're 9. 9 pairs are here. We shall compare it with this. You realize that what you have calculated is bigger than this or exceeds this, meaning it is significant. So you conclude that the comment is significant at 5%. Now put there this, but you should ignore it. This shouldn't be there. Because they stated the level of significance they wanted. And that's how the marks will be awarded. That was question one. Now shall go to question two. Question two says, part A, the taxi charges over distances of five and ten kilometers from town Chu. The, the charges are 2,800 shillings and 5,800 shillings respectively. Okay. Estimate, Roman 1, the distance from Chu worth shillings, 5,300. Okay. Roman 2, the travel refund when a ticket of 8 kilometers 
is cancelled to 5 kilometers. I think let's first begin with that. That is interpolation. So we shall come and extract out the values we want. The distance taxi charges for cost 2800. That is what is unknown, and the charge is 5300. Then 10 kilometers, 5800. So we shall use interpolation by equating the quotients. This minus this over this minus this to give you this part. Okay. This minus this over this minus this to give you this part. The next is to simplify and make x the subject. And that's what they wanted. Then Roman 2, there are two distances. One is 5, the other one is 8. So both 5 and 8 are enclosed between 4 and 10. So in this instance, 5, we don't know the charge. We shall look for it. So we shall repeat the procedure. Equate quotients. This minus this over this minus this to give you this part. This minus this over this minus this to give you this part. Then next is simplify and make y the subject. That was for a distance of 5 kilometers. What about for 8 kilometers? Let's just see max for this slide. For 8 kilometers, still do the extraction. Then equate quotients. This minus this over this minus this to give you this part. This minus this over this minus this to give you this part. Simplify and make y to the subject. So the refund was supposed to be the difference in the required transports, which will be shillings 1,500. Then part, that was part A. Now part B. Part B. By drawing graphs of this and this, show that the equation this has a root between 0 and 1. And hence obtain the root correct to two decimal places. So there we shall need to tabulate the values to plot. So when x is 0, this is 1, and this is 1. Now remember that this is a straight line, you only need the extreme points. So when x is 0 0.2, this will be that, two decimal places. When x is 0 0.4, when x is 0 0.6, when x is 0 0.8 and when x is 1 and also this is 6. So this straight line you only need the extreme points. For the curve you need more than intermediate points or so. So that the mass for this slide, now we, need, we are going to plot this with this, 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 this with this to get a curve. That means we need a graph paper and follow the same rules, leave one centimeter down and draw a horizontal axis, one centimeter up and leave a draw vertical axis. Now here we call them y axis, x axis, y axis. The news intervals of 2 to 10 meters to get a correct scale. Same applies to vertical, intervals of 2 to 10 meters and get a correct scale. Now we shall begin to plot. 0, 0.0 corresponds with this, 0, 0.2 with that, 0, 0.4 with that, 0, 0.6 with that, 0, 0.8 with that and the last one with that. So we need to draw a smooth curve to go through all those points. Let's draw that. Then we need to label it. 
Then also the line y equal to 5x plus 1. We need, it was this and this. So we shall use the ruler and join the two points. So I want you to realize that we are not exceeding that point or going before that point. Always remember that. Though it is a straight line, don't exceed the given range. The interval was 0 and 1. Then this intersection is our root, so we shall drop our peninsula to meet the vertical horizontal axis and read off that value. So that will be the root to two decimal places which they wanted. Okay, so that was question two. Now we shall go to question three. Question three says a string with one end attached to a four kilogram mass passes over a fixed pulley and carries a light pulley at its other end. Over a light pulley passes another string, carrying masses of 1,000 grams and 3,000 grams. Determine, but A, the acceleration of each mass on the light pulley. Then part B, the tension in the strings. So we shall need to make a sketch of what is given. So we have a fixed point, then there's a fixed pulley, there's a string, one side has 4 kilogram mass, the other side has a movable pulley. Then on the side with the movable pulley, there is also a string, one side has 3,000 kilogram, 3,000 grams, and the other side has 1,000 grams. Okay, that is it. Next is to now draw, show the forces. We shall begin with the weight. We know that weight always acts vertically downwards. So wait for this. It will be 1G. Now this G, most students confuse it to be grams, but it is not grams. It is acceleration due to gravity. Now the question is, why didn't I use 1000 grams? It is because for you to use MG, the mass should be in kilograms. So you're supposed to convert the 1,000 grams to kilograms, which gives you one kilogram. That's why we are seeing here, one G. Then this side, the weight is still three G. Here, the weight is four G. Okay, that is weight. Next is tension. For tension, you must remember that the arrows point towards each other. Arrows point towards each other. So here they will point towards each other to give T1. This is still the same string, meaning that even here the tension is T1, so they will point towards each other. So tension arrows point towards each other. Then here now this is a different string, so it will have a different tension. So same string has the same tension throughout. When the string changes, even tension changes. So come here, draw arrows pointing towards each other, put another tension T2, but this is also still the same string, so same tension T2. Now, acceleration. How do you know the which part goes down and which part goes up? So this GIF can help you to know how the motion is. But why is it so? One, you are going to add. This plus this gives you four kilograms. The plus after the whole of this. The reason why you are using four because they didn't give us the weight of this. They even called it a light pulley, meaning its mass is negligible. But if it was not, you are supposed to add it there. And even here, we were supposed to put its weight. Okay, now compare these 4 kilograms with these 4 kilograms, which will go down. Of course, there is equilibrium. Do you see that? Because they are all the same. So in that case, whatever direction you choose to pull the other is okay. But since this one has more masses, let us take this to go up and this to go down. That is why you are seeing here, this is going up and this is going down. So you come and put those accelerations. Here it will go down, 
and be a one here to go up. Okay. Then for these ones, they are somehow funny. Do you know how funny they are? Let me show you how funny they are. One, if this is, you look at this, these ones are going down, but also this is going down. How will it affect? So this is heavier than this. So this will go down and this will go up. Let's say an acceleration of A2 and here A2 also. But that A2 is not the only acceleration. Reason being, this pulley is also moving down. So what we do, we get the resultant. If this is downward with, so this was up, okay? This was up and this was down with an acceleration of A2. So the resultant means... For this one, down, down, it will be addition. Down, up, it will be subtraction. So here, down, down, it will be addition, A2 plus A1. Here, down, up, it will be subtraction. So it will be A2 minus A1. Okay, so when that is done, you can now go to the calculations. Considering the 4 kilogram mass, this one, we shall use these forces. So T1 minus 4G is equal to 4A. Then for the pulley, movable pulley, movable pulley, we consider these forces from here up to here. It is going down on meaning 2T2 minus T1 is equal to 0. 0 because the mass is negligible. Then for the 3 kilogram mass, okay, the 3,000 grams, we shall need these forces. It is going down, so it will be 3G minus T2 is equal to 3 times this acceleration. Then for the 1 kilogram mass of 1,000 gram mass, we shall use these forces. It is going up, so it will be T2 minus 1G equal to this 1 times this acceleration. Okay, so there are the four equations. Let's see for this slide, after which you shall see how to use them. They want you to get acceleration and tensions. Therefore, you need to solve those four equations simultaneously to get the value of T1, T2, A1, A2. How is it done? The best is to first eliminate tensions and deal with accelerations alone. So equ equation 3 plus equation 1 we shall come up with this, it's reduced to give you that. Then equation 1 plus equation 2, when we add the 2, we shall come up with this. Then equation 3 multiplied by 2 plus equation 6, this is what we shall come up with. We shall come up with this. So I have managed, let me reduce it, I have managed to, read to, X to eliminate the tension in equation 7 and in equation 5. Meaning I can use the two equations to get the values of a, a1 and a2. So in this I'll, I'll eliminate a1. This minus this is 4. This minus this is 7. Meaning that a2 will be that. Then now, now that I've got a2, I can get a1 from equation 7. Was this equation 7? Actually... No, it wasn't equation 7, it was supposed to be equation 5 here. Should be equation 5 this. Then I got A2 as that. Sorry, A1 as that. But remember, they asked for accelerations. This has to go back and you see. They asked for acceleration of this mass and this mass. So they want the value of A2 minus A1 and the value of A2 plus A1. Before we go to do that, let's first see the mass for this slide. Okay. So now A2 minus A1 is that, meaning that the acceleration of the 1000 gram mass is this upward. Acceleration is a vector quantity, so you need to show the direction. For this, acceleration is that, and it is also, it is now downward. Then part B, they wanted tensions. 
So from equation one, I can substitute for a one and get the value of t one. Then from equation two, I substitute for a two and get equation. Sorry, equation two I substitute for t one to get the value of tension t two, and that's what they wanted. Then question four says the table below shows consumer commodities A, B, C bought by a certain company in a certain district. Using 2020 as the base year, calculate the price relative for each commodity, value index, and Pasche value in average price index. So price relative means price in the current year over price in the base year. So you are coming and say formula is that and using the formula I can now get the price relatives for each. For A it is that, for B it is that, for C it is that, for D it is that and that's what they wanted. Then Roman 2, they wanted value index. Value index, we use both current and base quantities. So summation of PC, PC means price in current year, which is 2024. Choose means quantity in the current year, which is 2024. So multiply the two and then sum all to get the output, which is that. Then also use PB and P should be. PB it means price in the base year which is 2020, should be means quantity in the base year, which is 2020. So multiply and add everything to get the output. Then you can now code the formula for value index and substitute, then get the output. And that's what they wanted. Then Roman 3 was Pasche average price index. For Pasteur, we use only the quantity in the current year. So multiply this, this squared times 2 over PB for each, and get the output, which is that. Therefore, Pasteur average price index is given by this formula. So, so the good thing, this one, you already got it in Roman 2, so that's why you are not seeing any of its substitution, of its manipulation. So you just substitute this, we have calculated this we got in the previous, in Roman 2, so you come up with this as the value of Pasche average price index. Then question 5, A Roman 1 says, round off this to four significant figures and Roman 2 truncate this to three significant figures. So rounding off means you count for one, two, three, four. Then look at the value after it is six, meaning that it increments this by one. Therefore the truncating will be 16.01. Then for Roman 2, truncate. Truncate means you cut. You just come here and cut. So you don't mind what is here. You just cut. But maintaining the place value. So this will now be 586000, which will give us this value. 586000. The reason why you're adding the zeros is to maintain the place value. Then part B. Part B says a right angled triangle is measured with a base of this and height of this, all dimensions corrected to the given number of decimal places. Roman 1 state the maximum error in each dimension. 
let's first begin with that maximum possible error in each now for maximum, maximum possible error you just look at the decimal places decimal places are equivalent to the zeros here there are two decimal places so there will be two zeros followed by five here there are three decimal places there will be three zeros followed by five and that is it then Roman 2, Roman 2, let me see what they asked. Find the interval within which the exact value of its area lies. Correct to five decimal places. Okay. And hence determine the relative error correct to three significant figures. So interval means you have to get the maximum and minimum value. But since they ask for also relative error, we need to get the working value. Working value means you substitute in the given formula without adding any error or subtracting any error. Just use the values as they are. That is called the working value. So these are the marks for this slide. Then we shall see, now we shall get the maximum and minimum. Maximum means this is maximum, this is maximum because it's a product. So I'll come up with that. This is called boosting accuracy. They wanted five decimal places, but use more than five. Then minimum, this is minimum, this is minimum, you boost accuracy. Then at the final value, that's when you round off to the required number of decimal places. That is the interval. Then for the hence part, they wanted relative error. Relative error, I need to first get the maximum error. Maximum error says maximum minus minimum over 2. So maximum minus minimum over 2, you come up with that. After that, you can now get relative error by the formula of maximum error over working value. Maximum error, working value, then use the calculator. And that will be the answer they wanted then question six says a particle is projected vertically upwards with a velocity of 28 meters per second after two seconds another particle is projected vertically upwards from the same point of projection and with an initial velocity of this find when the particles are at the same height from the point of projection when means time and the velocity of each body at that instant so shall need to make a sketch that is just a sketch to show the motions and to help you with the calculation. So it will not carry a mark. It will not carry a mark. So for the first particle, that is motion ABC, we have initial velocity, we have the height is displacement is H, time is T, velocity we don't know it. So using the second equation of motion, substitute and get equation one. So here, yeah, the first mark was to identify the time. Remember, they, they are thrown at different times. You see this after two seconds. So you need to know that this one... <clears throat> so before we go to the next slide, these are the marks. I think you realize that first mark was for identifying the times. It is because the, the particles are thrown at different times. So you're supposed to identify that one is t, the other one is t minus one. Sorry, t minus two. Then we can go to the second particle. For the second particle, we have this as initial velocity, this as displacement, this as time, velocity is not known. 
called the second equation of motion substitute expand expand again and simplify that is equation two now we need to solve those two equations to get the value of t so when i equate the two t will be eliminated let me see most of this slide so now i have only t as the h will be eliminated so i have only t as the only unknown so i have to solve it simplify and get the value of t then for the first particle if i use the first equation of motion i'll get u minus g t to get the velocity they want it is negative then for the second particle still use second equation u minus g t minus 2 to get this which is also negative so that means that so velocity there are two different words they can use speed and they can use velocity when they use velocity we need also the direction so some of you forgot to write this word downward it is not okay you need to write it there and that is what they wanted so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on solutions to physics paper one so if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that i can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platform like facebook and whatsapp so that you can all benefit us a family